Hi there, this is a video lesson on stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is basically using a balance equation to calculate quantities of chemicals. When we think of our balance equation as kind of a recipe, it tells us what we start with and how much of everything we start with, and it tells us what we can make and how much we can make, just like a recipe does. So stoichiometry, it's a little more complicated than that because we're dealing with chemistry and, and whatnot, but um, it's basically a recipe. Now, one uh, hint to tell you, units will help you. A lot of you get in the habit of not putting units on your numbers. Um, for this unit, um, or for this chapter, units um, are very important. They help you kind of see the pattern. They help you check to see if you're setting things up right and all that stuff. And not only will you want to put the unit, like grams or moles or whatever, you'll also want to put um, the chemical um, name. So like CH4 or CO2 or H2O, whatever. And we'll get into that when we get into some examples. But I just want to go through the kind of intro notes here real quick. Um, stoichiometry will always include a conversion factor that has moles over moles. And we call this the mole ratio because we have our fraction, we have moles of some chemical, say chemical X, and we have moles of some other chemical, say chemical Y. This is what we call the mole ratio. And obviously because it's moles over moles. Now one thing we've been used to doing is whenever we see mole in a fraction, we put a one in front of it. Well, that time has ended. We no longer can automatically do that. Now, if we have moles with grams, whether that mole is on the bottom or the top, it doesn't matter. Um, if we have moles with grams, yes, mole is still always going to be a 1. But when we have moles and moles, we get those numbers from a different place. We get them from the balanced equation. We get them from our recipe. And we'll see that when we start doing some examples here. So mole ratio is key to stoichiometry. And that might even be an answer to one of your book questions right there. Um, there's some steps here. And I'll come back to these steps um, once we start doing some examples. The next little thing here is something I call the stoic roadmap. And... Um, it's basically, if you get stuck when you're doing a stoic question, if you don't know where to go next, um, the stoic roadmap should help you find your way, kind of like a real map does. Um, if you have this printed out, uh, I would recommend drawing a line down the middle between the two moles here. And on the left of that line, put start. And on the right of the line, put uh, end. So we have grams, moles, moles, grams. We're always going to start over on the left side of our roadmap. We're always going to end on the right side of our roadmap. So you're either going to start with grams or moles over here, or end with grams or moles over here. So you always start on the left and end on the right. Again, um, when we start getting into some examples, I'll show you how to use that. And there are four main units we're going to use. Um, they are the mole. And like I said, if mole is with grams, mole is still always one, just like we always said it was. But this new scenario, this new situation, when moles is with mole, so moles over moles, you look at the coefficients of your balanced equation. You look at the big numbers in front of the chemicals. The other unit we'll use is grams, and just like before, whenever we have grams, we are going to use our periodic table, and we're going to look at the little red number up in the corner uh, for a particular chemical. Um, atoms, or it could be molecules or formula units, we will use Avogadro's number. It's been a little while since we've used this number, but and we won't use it a whole lot. It's not a terribly useful number um, or a conversion to do um, since we can't count out 
individual atoms or molecules, figuring out how many atoms or molecules are, are in something is not all that useful of a um, process. And the last one is liters. Um, and this only works for gases, so it's volume. And if we have liters, we always put 22.41 in front of it. Again, we'll come back to a lot of this when we start doing examples, which I think we will get right into. Um, here's an example of a balanced equation. Think of it as a recipe. Again, four moles of Na, one mole of O2, there's no number there, but there's a one, we all know it's there, makes two moles of Na2O. That's our recipe. So, let's do an example. Um, if you are, uh, you know, printed this out and following along, you can fill in the answer there uh, for blank two. So, and maybe I will write that out here. Actually, one second. Okay, I just want to give myself a little more room to write there. So at the top here, I'm going to write my balanced equation. Again, it's 4 Na plus 1 O2 uh, reacts to make, what was it, 2 Na2 O. 4 Na's, 4 Na's, 2 O's, 2 O's. Yep, we're good. So with this first question, it says, if we want to make 3.47 moles of Na2O, how many moles of sodium will we need, assuming there is excess oxygen? Now that excess oxygen part, whenever you see excess, it just means we have extra. And if we have extra oxygen, we don't have to worry about it. We can ignore it. We have more oxygen than we need, so we don't have to worry about it. So the only two things we're worried about are um, our starting number, 3.47 moles, and then how many moles of sodium we'll need to make that much Na2O. So, the way I set this up, and if we go back up to steps here, I got my balanced equation, so that's always the first thing. I write down the given number in unit, include the chemical formula in the units, like I mentioned before. I write down the conversion factors. Uh, remember the units start with, go on the bottom. Units are converting to, go on top. If you get lost, use the stoic roadmap, and I'll draw one of those in a second. And then you do the calculations and check to make sure you end up with the correct units. So, here's my question. There's my balanced equation. If I read the question, and I got one number here. It's the only number I have, so that's my starting number. 3.47 moles of N. A two O. Just like before, times blank line, moles, N A two O on the bottom. Now, at this point, I can just kind of rationalize or kind of think my way through this. So, if I have a certain number of moles of N A two O, since my recipe here is measured in moles. So this is four moles of Na, one mole of O2 makes two moles of Na2O. And I have moles and I'm trying to get to moles, I can just use my recipe. Now if you're kind of still struggling to make sense of that, this is where that roadmap can help you out and kind of tell you where to go. So again, we're going to start over on the left, either grams or moles. In this case, we're starting with moles. So I'm going to start here. And I have moles of Na2O. And the question is asking for moles of sodium. So I'm trying to get right here on my map. And moles of, and the chemical over here is sodium. So if I look at my map, I can go directly from moles of Na2O to moles of Na. And again, that makes sense because our recipe is written in moles, and we have to use our recipe to go from one chemical to another. So, moles of Na is what goes on top. So the roadmap kind of helps you figure out what unit should go on the top. And the unit on the bottom is always going to be carried over from, or automatically goes there, from either our starting unit or from 
the top of the previous conversion factor, which we'll see in more uh, complex stoichiometry question here. So it's all set up, and if I think about it, I can check to see if it's set up correctly right now because moles of Na2O and moles of Na2O, those are going to cancel out. So that's going to cancel that. So we'll be left with moles of Na, which is what the question is asking for. How many moles of sodium? So, like I said earlier in the notes, when we have moles over moles, we get our numbers from the balance equation. Here we have moles of Na. Well, I just look at my balance equation. There's a 4 here. So I'm going to put a 4 here. Um, moles of Na2O, there's a 2 there. So I'm going to put a 2 here. Now I do that math, my calculator over here, I do 3.47 times the top number, so times 4, get an answer, and then divide that by the bottom number, so divide by 2, gives me 6.94, and 6.94 moles of Na is my answer. I got three sig figs here, I got three sig figs there, moles of Na is my unit, which is what I'm looking for, so we're all good. Um, I might stop this video here, only got like three and a half minutes left, and do a couple more examples in the next video. Um, this is a one-step stoichiometry question, just moles to moles. If you think of it, our roadmap, we're just going from one step. Um, some of the other examples I will show you are three, uh, two steps or three steps. If you're going all the way from grams of one chemical to grams of another, that would be three steps. So, um, next video has a few more examples. You'll want to watch that. And if you have any questions, be sure and stop by on an off day, send me an email, anything like that.